Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Zero to 60. Now, sorry for the delay in videos this week. It's just been a bit of a crazy week. Um, but this video is gonna be on trying to make a cheap, well, I say cheap, cheap-ish, very powerful power supply for coding, programming, that sort of stuff. The type of power supply that you need if you're gonna be doing programming on an F-series BMW, but can also make you feel a little bit a little bit warm and fuzzy inside when you're making a key for an E-Series, something that I've been doing lately. Um, now this has come about because the cheap Chinese charger that I bought, and I did do a video on it, not only did it not output the 30 amps that it said on the packet, it also lasted about three weeks. Um, so I needed to find an alternative. Now these snap-on chargers, I actually got given this by a friend and I have done a video on it on our other channel, which I'll put a link to just up in the corner. That video, um, shows me failing to fix it. But these things, these actually outputted a solid 60 amps at 13.8 volts. Now that is beastly. That should be enough to do what I want to do. When I got given it, I was pretty excited about it. I think I know what I'm gonna do to fix it. There were, there were two things wrong with it. I only fixed one of the things. Um, Interesting video, if you like old workshop tech, I've wanted one of these chargers forever. They were always sort of out of my price range. Um, which is why I ended up with the Chinese battery charger things. Um, however, in the last sort of five to 10 years, it's becoming more and more popular to modify computer power supplies. Now, the good thing about computer power supplies is they're relatively quiet. There are switching power supplies, not a transformer like that. I mean, that thing weighs about 25 kilos. It is an absolute monster and it only outputs 60 amps. The one that I have purchased weighs about two kilos and outputs over double the current of the snap-on charger. It's this one here, it's a KD175. Now, if this works, I'll put all the information down in the description below on exactly which one I bought and the documentation that I used, which has come from an RC, Remote Control Car Forum, on how to set it up. Um, but long story short, what we're gonna do, we're gonna try and modify it, which I've sort of worked out here, and I'll show you guys what we've done. I'm gonna modify it to output 13.8 volts instead of the 12, bolts that they put out when they're used in a computer. Now these things, the reason they're so powerful, I'm, I'm sure you might have seen them in movies or whatever, but they're designed to run like a rack mount server where you've got a computer that might have 10 or 20 CPUs, 100 hard drives, like storage servers. Um, so obviously they need to output a lot of current. It must be exactly 12 volts or very close to 12 volts and clean, nice power, which is what makes them good for coding F-series. Um, or E-Series for that matter, but it should put out a very stable voltage and a relatively clean power source, which is what you want. You don't want weird transient currents going through the car when you're trying to program sensitive electronics, which is what these BMWs will have in. Um, the benefit of this type of setup, or what we're gonna try and do today, I bought this for 150 Australian dollars delivered. Um, to get a power supply that you just go and buy from a shop to do this, even like a cheaper version, it's probably going to be at least a thousand Australian. I'm hoping to spend sort of fifty to eighty dollars modifying it, um, and we'll see how we go. Like I said, I'm not, I haven't actually got this working yet, but I'm fairly confident I know how we're going to make it work, make it safe, and it should be good. Okay, so where do I want to start? Let me show you guys what I worked out the other day before I committed to making a video on it. Now I have just here a voltmeter, yeah voltmeter, I forgot the name of them. Oh, it's also an amp meter. Let me just turn the power supply on. You can hear it fire up. You can hear the fan. There's actually only one fan going at the moment. You can see right now it's outputting minus 008 volts. Now this, all of this wiring here is what we need to jumper and trick to make this output the higher voltage. And just here I have a trim pot. I'll explain it all better once we know what's going on. But this is where I've got with the testing. Now, this is now gonna be the on switch to actually activate the power supply. And you can see there with my trim pot, we're outputting 13.6 volts. If I disconnect my trim pot, which is this one. Actually, let's turn the power supply off. This is all very dangerous. But if I disconnect my trim pot, it's going to be these three wires and I power it back on. You can see it outputs 12.2. Now that's 12.2 volts at no load. So I assume when you actually hook some load up to it, that's when it will output its 12 volts, which is what it would have needed in the computer setup. So I'm confident we can get it outputting the right voltage. We've just got to make it all work. Where do we go? Where do we go? Okay, let me show you what's going on. Now, first thing we need to do is disconnect it from the power. And we're gonna disconnect it from the mains because this is all quite dangerous. And if anybody's gonna follow this guide, please remember 
if you electrocute yourself, it will hurt. So just be super careful. I'm gonna take these fans off so we can get a better look. And even though this is now disconnected from the mains power, you must remember there's some quite large capacitors in there that will still freaking hurt if you touch something that you shouldn't be touching. Okay, so that's the main circuit board. Now my plan is I've got all these jumper cables into the points that we need to connect onto and I'm gonna run them in and then have all the modified circuitry in here. Let me bring up the PDF file that I've been following and I'll explain what we're gonna do. Okay, now let me show you something I worked out the other day. So there's, there's two main modifications we need to do to get this working. The first one, I need to adjust the output voltage. We do that with a potentiometer or I've got a trim pot here. Uh, the other thing we need to do is quieten the fans down. Now the fans are crazy loud on this thing and when you run it, when you basically hotwire it, which is what we're gonna do, um, obviously this is designed to connect to a server and have a signal coming from the server to tell it if it's under load or what it's doing. Um, because we're hot wiring it, we need to manually control the fans. So the fan speed control, I'm actually gonna run a resistor inside the box, which will actually let it run a lower fan speed than it's designed to out of the box. But then we will have a potentiometer that lets us adjust fan speed. Um, but let me show you just something first while the fans are on there. Now, I think uh, from memory, okay, my white wire is my fan speed control. All right, let's see if we can do this in one take. So my white wire is my fan speed control, but it will still only drop down to a certain fan speed. I'm sure you guys will hear it. So this one is gonna actually turn the power supply on. And that is how loud the fans are. Which is obviously even too loud to have running in a workshop. But if we jump at this wire, it will slow the fans down. But I'd kind of like them to even be, or have it so it's possible to go even quieter than that. And let me just see if I can wedge this in. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so that's gonna run at a lower fan. Now this potentiometer, the other thing we need to do, we actually need to modify it so we can run past its voltage protection. Because this is designed to run sensitive computer electronics, it's actually got a voltage cut off around 13.7 or 13.8 volts to stop it over volting your hard drives and that sort of stuff. Um, now we need to bypass that because we want to run up at that voltage. So here we have, oh, this is fine. Let's just reconnect that in there. So we can see it's set at 13.6. If I adjust my trim pot to go to a higher voltage, try and do it in one camera angle. So we'll just keep cranking it up. Turning the trim pot clockwise, you can see the volts climbing. It reacts kind of slowly, but we'll keep winding. 13.7. Haven't actually tested this. Does it have voltage protection? 13.8. Keep winding. There it is, so it's shut down. I wasn't actually looking at that when it shut down, but we need to get past that because we wanna be able to run up close to that voltage and it may need to output 13.8 to hold a solid 13.6 when you actually connect the load on it. I don't know exactly, hopefully we're gonna be able to test that in this video. So that's the other thing that we need to get around. Now, let me just power it down and let's disconnect it from the mains. You can hear it's still running. That's the capacitors in there storing current. Very easy to hurt yourself if you don't know what you're doing with this stuff. Okay, now speaking of don't know what you're doing, I have no idea, so let's go through it quickly. So this is the PDF. Now this PDF is actually listed on one of the BMW forums as well, and I'll try and put a link to this PDF in the description. Um, but this is basically how I've worked out what I wanted to do. Now the first part of the process, what I'm gonna do is run a 500 ohm Yes, it was a 500 ohm pot. Well, I'm using a trim pot, but it's 501. So I've got a 500 ohm pot in between these three pins. Now this little diagram here, or the pin matrix, is this little matrix of pins down here. So what I've actually done, I've connected my pin, trot, pin trim pot to D3, D4, and C3 as per this document. And that there, as I adjust it, clockwise gives me more voltage, anti-clockwise will turn the voltage down. It's that simple. Now I haven't put any resistors in there, but it does say in this diagram that we will need to put a over voltage resistor. 
sorry, I need to disable the over voltage protection by shorting out two pins on the daughter board. Now the daughter board, let me get this out of the way and I'll show you where that is. Okay, so you can see there, what we need to do is short out those two points there and that will actually disable the over voltage protection. So we'll try that first. So what I'm gonna do, and this is the daughter board here, it's this, this piece here. I need to solder a wire between those two points. So, soldering iron's warming up. I might just cut a little bit off the resistor and add some solder to it and get that joined, which I'll need two hands to do. Okay, so I've just put the fans back on so we can do a test. I've got the voltmeter hooked up. Uh, I haven't touched the potentiometer, so it is currently set where it shut down on voltage before. So we'll turn it on. That's the first standby fan. Let's give it power. That'll turn the power supply on. And we're now outputting 13.9 volts. Okay, and it didn't shut down. So. That one mod does remove the over voltage protection, which is good. So let this just power down. Okay, that's disconnected from the mains. And I'll just pull those fans off and I'll show you what the soldering looks like. Okay, so we're back to the sub board in there and you can see where I just soldered. Well, what I did was I just cut a piece of wire off a resistor, coated it in solder and then joined them up. Um, I'm sure there's a better way to do it. Feel free to comment below the better way to do it, but that has removed the over voltage protection. Right, next thing, we need to come down here. Oh, I should just show you as well. So on these ports at the back, the five on the left are for negative and the five on the right are for positive. Each one outputs 25 to 28 amps. And when you join them all together, that is when you get your 140 amps. Um, now, what I want to do from this point, we know we're putting out enough voltage to charge with, although we will need to set voltage afterwards. The last thing we need to do is sort out the fan speed control. Okay, so the first part of this mod, we need to wire in a 1000 ohm resistor between, we can either go between these two points on this microchip or between these two points here. Now, one bonus of doing these two points is gonna be some solder here to join onto, but I'm going to do it to this point here because that's what the person did who did this PDF. And just so you can see in here, this is the microchip just here that we're gonna solder onto, or we've got those two points just there. Now, I just thought to explain as well, we have the three, is it gonna focus? We have the three fan connectors there. You can see from left to right, fan two, fan three in the middle, and then fan one on the right. Fan one on the right is a standby fan. So as soon as this unit has any form of power, fan one turns on. But when you actually power the power supply on, it then tries to power up fan two and fan three. Now fan two and fan three, they're actually monitored and they send a taco signal or a fan speed signal to the unit. If the fan speed signal is too low, it shuts the unit down. Now that has been, I suppose that was one of the hiccups with people that were using these in the early days. Like if you were using them to charge batteries or using it as a benchtop power supply, it was just too loud. But this resistor basically tricks the signal coming from the tack speed and lets you run the fans at a lower speed. So we're gonna put the resistor in, that will get us past the security side of the fan speed, and then we'll hook up a potentiometer so that we can wire, well, basically speed up or slow the fans down. So I'm gonna to get to soldering the resistor onto that chip just there. So that didn't go to plan. Um, I could not get it to go onto the chip. Um, so I've ended up putting the resistor onto that point there. Uh, yeah, just couldn't get it to stick to the chip. So anyway, I don't know how to solder very well, but that should be the modification to allow us to now do a slow fan speed. What I'm gonna do from this point is now connect the potentiometer up, which let me just double check. I'm pretty sure we got it here. That's what. This guy's one looks like, got the 1K fan resistor. 
And now it's just a matter of getting a 50K potentiometer connected to those points there. So let me get that wired in and we'll see if we can flow, slow this fan. Alright guys, so I'll put the fans back on and we've got the potentiometer wired in as per that PDF guide. Now this is a, yeah, it is a 10K potentiometer. Um, this was like a couple of dollars, I think. Uh, I will also put a, a link to all of the parts that I purchased so that you know what will work or what won't work. Um, the only thing I must be honest with, I've never played with potentiometers before. I should, I should look in the camera with confusion. Um, I don't know which is ground or which way it's gone. I've just followed the way that they aligned a different brand of potentiometer on the guide above. So let's see if it catches on fire. Um, <laughs> all right, let's power it on. Okay, so we've got the one fan going and it's going at a slowish speed. Let's turn the power supply on. Hey, the fans picked up and then they slowed down. So we've got the other two on. Now we should be able to adjust the fan speed. It's fully anti-clockwise at the moment. Okay, not getting hot or anything. Hey, they're speeding up. We have adjustable fans. Now they're still not going. Let me turn it down. That's not going as fast as it was before and that's because of the resistor that we put in. Um, you could actually just run this potentiometer without the resistor but it would all be at a higher speed. And I think for the type of use I'm gonna do with this, I don't need the fans to go flat out. You gotta remember the, the cooling and the setup on this was designed to run in a rack mount server with lots of other electrical components all around it. And it needed to completely rely on the air coming through to get the heat out. There was no way for it to radiate heat top, bottom and around. So in theory, this won't ever be in the thermal conditions that it was designed. So hopefully the lower fan speed is gonna be fine. Even if we are cranking I mean, even on a even on an F series, you won't run 70 amps for very long. Um, I don't think, anyway. We'll find out. We'll find out when we play with this. Right. So I think it's actually working. Oh, I didn't check the voltage. Uh, turn it back on. How are we going for voltage? So we're at 13.8 volts at the moment. While we're playing here, and I've got this sort of test bed set up, let me just increase the voltage, which you guys might. Can you see what I'm doing? Yes, you can just see. So I've got the other, the voltage potentiometer here, or the trim pot. Let's turn the volts up. 13.95. Let's go to 14. Why not? We're good. We can adjust voltage. That's awesome. Now, I'm going to set it at 13.8, no load. I think that's probably going to be... about where I want it to be. Maybe 13.6. Well, we've got it 13.8 there. Uh, can you see it? We've got 13.8. Uh, let's just turn it off. And that one's off. Yeah, so my thinking with this at the moment, um, yeah, I've done a bit more of a basic setup. Now, I did actually buy a voltmeter, which I will wire in, because I think being able to see the volts is quite important. But for simplicity's sake, I didn't want to have an adjustable voltage on the outside of the unit, um, which is why I went for a trim pot. So this is going to sit inside. If I do ever need to adjust the voltage, I'll just have to take the top case off and I can manually make the adjustment. But I didn't want somebody grabbing this because of its potential power output. I didn't want somebody borrowing it and then winding the volts up to something dangerous and hooking up to a car. Um, because we have now removed the over voltage protection, I don't know how much this will pump out. I don't know if it'll pump out 20 volts at 100 amps. I don't know. Um, so I've kept the voltage on the inside of it just to be safe. Uh, with the intention is if I lend it to someone, it's just gonna put out whatever I set it to and to change the voltage, we've gotta do that. That's my theory. Um, I did look at a few guys that have set these up. In fact, the, the dude in the PDF, uh, he had external voltage control. He even had an amp meter inside, which I would have liked to have done, um, but just didn't have time to set it up. And I'm just gonna use my clamp meter to check amps. Right, so this is everything wired in that we need to do for sort of the controls of it. This is gonna go on a switch. This is this switch here. Um, I'm gonna tidy all this up, basically get it all hidden. And then from that point on, we've just got to work on connecting these terminals to something that'll actually carry 100 amps.
should be easy. All the wires are now tucked in. They actually have these little holes, which I guess would locate it in a server rack. So I've just got all the wires that are doing all the control work running straight in. Um, I'll just lift this up. This is actually part of the fan channeling, which we will leave in there. Ah, oh, shit, we've opened the fans. Okay, so I've got the potentiometer for the voltage just glued to the side there. The plan is I'll have a little hole that I'll be able to poke a very small screwdriver down if I want to adjust the voltage. We'll just put that back there. Uh, and then we've got all the wiring running down to the main switch, which is a nice solid switch, which is off at the moment, obviously. And then we've got the fan speed potentiometer over that side. Um, yeah, that took 33 minutes and 50 seconds. Got a shout out to Carl Throttle's latest video. It's actually pretty cool. They are really doing good things with internet videos. Okay, so obviously everything's off. We'll switch it on. We get LEDs to say that we are actually making power, and with this one, we can adjust the fan speed. We're cooking with gas. Switch it off for now. All right, the only thing that's left to do is actually make some sort of connection here. Which I haven't exactly worked out what I'm gonna do yet. The plan was to use five pairs of 12 gauge. Now this is 25 amp wire going into a distribution block and, and into some jump leads. So let me see what I can construct. And guys, I think the next clip you're gonna see will be testing it, charging up the fastest stock turbo 135 I've ever seen. Right. Well, bit of an update, cause it's not going to plan. Um, so I had, I bought this twin core 25 amp wire that I figured it was just, it was cheap. It was like $2 a meter or $3 a meter or something. Um, but I thought I'd split and run five positives, five negatives into this 140 amp uh, quick disconnect. And obviously that will go there. And then we've got jumper leads coming off there. Um, however, I cannot get enough heat into this to solder these wires to that. Uh, and you can see like we're getting it pretty hot we're melting everything and I just cannot get a decent connection onto these terminals. So maybe this will be the end of the video. Um, yeah, I might have to go and borrow some tools, which is a bit of a bummer because I was hoping to test this in this episode. Um, yeah, bit of an update. See how we go. See if I can get it done today. I'll just add, I have a tinning pot that I can properly tin the wires and it wicks in like it, it becomes this solid piece. Um, but yeah, I can't get enough heat into those to get the tinned wires to stick to them. It's just a mess. And I'm using very large soldering iron, that soldering iron and even a gas soldering iron and nothing is hot enough. Hmm. Well, uh, unfortunately it is now just gone 7.30 at night and I haven't been able to find anyone to borrow a decent soldering iron and trying to heat up different stuff. I'm, I'm using two soldering irons at once. I, I can't do with what I've got here. Not a good connection anyway. Um, I haven't been doing this all afternoon. I did just do an MSD81 swap for a customer. Um, that was with an ISTA P encoded cast. That was kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, I've spent another 40 minutes just playing with the equipment that I have here even gas blow torches, that sort of stuff. I can't get enough heat to get a good solder joint on these connectors. And basically what's causing the problem, we've got, uh, I mean, this is 12 gauge wire. So there's, there's a reasonable amount of heat conductivity going on in the wire itself. And you actually see these ones that I've been trying to work on. You can see how it's melting the insulation. So the heat is getting right down in the wire. On top of that, these connections in here, they're huge. Well, this is what the server's supposed to run off. Um, I mean, each one of those is designed to hold 28 amps, so they're huge chunks of metal, and it's just pulling the heat away from the soldering iron. So I can't get enough heat to make the solder work, um, as you can see by all the built up solder there. So I'm not going to finish it today, unfortunately. Um, it's going to have to be a 
two-part video, um, which is probably long enough. Anyway, I'm going to go get this edited. I need to get a video out today. I feel bad for not getting more videos out. Um, things we can take away. We have got all the circuitry working to control this as a power supply or a benchtop power supply, so we can adjust voltage. We can adjust fan speed. All I need to do is get it connected to some beefy jump leads so we can run some decent amps through it, which hopefully I'll get sorted tomorrow. Um, until then, thank you very much for watching. If you've got any questions about building this power supply, let me know. This is the technical side of it. Um, but I, yeah, I really don't want to rush this side of it because if we don't get a good connection here, the heat that builds up is going to be intense and could be a potential fire problem, fire hazard. So I want to make sure this is done properly. This is all... I mean, this has got to be done properly, but if one of these shorted out inside, I bet it wouldn't even do anything. Um, where if this shorts out, gets hot, whatever, it will be a problem. So I want to make sure that's done properly before I share a good way of doing that. Um, I will put the link to the PDF that I followed, which is now closed because BIM tools up, the PDF that I followed to make all this work. And if you've got any questions about doing it, let me know. Um, once I work out a way of connecting this to my old jump leads, um, the only parts I've actually bought is a trim pot, which was like a dollar, the potentiometer, which again was one or two dollars, a little bit of wiring I've used. I did buy some new wiring, um, just because I was getting low and I kind of wanted to use some neat stuff. But yeah, a little bit of wiring, these little um, computer connectors or test clip thingies. This was $5.00 and then i did spend about five dollars on two meters of this wiring which i haven't been able to use yet but it would i've not spent a lot of money on this although it looks like you might need like a 200 dollar soldering iron to make it work um we'll see how we go i'll see what we can find out and i will update you guys once i've got it working and i can test the current coming out of it which will hopefully be tomorrow but until then thank you for watching we're still alive we'll catch you on the next one